There's a secret trick only the top 1% of video editors use to make viewers addicted to their edits. Just because of that trick, their editing feels like the part of the video, not just an extra layer added on top. In fact, this technique is so easy to create, but it can blow the quality of your work through the roof. And today, I'm gonna give it to you completely for free. We are talking about morphing. Apple has mastered the use of that trick through their entire UI, and the reason they got it right is because it's not only about morphing, it's more about using the right timing, movement, and simplicity. So after watching this tutorial, you'll have the knowledge on how to properly use the morphing technique which a lot of editors use wrong. So without further ado, let's get straight into Adobe After Effects. We are back in the software, let me just show you the comp settings. Today we're gonna be working with 3840 by 2160 which is gonna make this animation really crispy. So if you wanna follow along to a T, make sure to set it up like that. Set frame rate to 30 and then duration is gonna be set to 5 seconds. Now I'm gonna hit OK. And essentially I prepared one asset for today which you're gonna be able to find in the description below. But it doesn't really matter what you're gonna be using because it's gonna work for every picture. So I'm gonna delete it for now and I'll head over to the round rectangle tool and we're gonna create a shape. Now let's recenter and we're gonna adjust the properties in the size. So in order to adjust X and Y separately, we're gonna check constraint proportions. The first value is gonna be set to 1100 and second one to 620. Round asset 46 is fine and we're also gonna rename the layer to frame. Quick interruption, I actually extended Black Friday deal only until the end of Cyber Monday. So the bundle with 300 plus assets including ready to use animations, backgrounds, transitions and a free two and a half hour breakdown of my recent banger animation with a project file will disappear. Link is in the description and now back to the video. So now I'm gonna take the time indicator and I wanna place it at around 1 second. Then we're gonna create a keyframe for size, I'll move 3 frames forward and we're gonna adjust the Y property to 240. So that way you're gonna have something like that which is looking extremely stiff, so we need to fix it with an expression. So if you now head over to the comment section, you're gonna find the expression I left for you. So now if you hold Alt and click on the stopwatch, you're gonna be able to paste the expression over here. Now let's click away, and this is gonna give us that nice bouncy movement. So now we're ready to actually bring our thumbnail onto the timeline. And now hit S on the keyboard in order to reveal scale and we're gonna adjust it to the position of our shape. So you kinda wanna do a good job over here. Alright, this seems good enough, so now I'm gonna actually adjust the zoom. So now the key to morphing the shapes is having them go in the same direction. So for example when we got the shape squeezing in, we need to do the same thing for the thumbnail. So now we need to hit S on the keyboard, I'll create a keyframe for scale, let's make sure to align that keyframe with this one over here, and then we're gonna do the same thing as before, so we're gonna uncheck constraint proportions, and with the Y value over here I'm gonna adjust it to the position of the shape. So now we're gonna have something like that which is not really looking compelling. So we need to fix some things. So I'm gonna go to the thumbnail over here and I will trim it to the position of the last keyframe. And then as for the frame, I'm gonna hold shift click T in order to reveal opacity. I'll hit the stopwatch and I'll move it forward. Now let's change it to 0% in the beginning and let's see what we got. It already looks very nice, but if we turn on the motion blur, it's gonna be even better. And by the way, here's the pro tip, if you head over to the composition settings, then you can go to advanced. You can steal my values for the properties over here. And that way you're gonna have the exact same motion blur. Once we've done that, we need to create the text. So I'm gonna grab the type tool and I'll type in season five, out now. I'm gonna recenter. And as for the font style, I really like owner's text. So I'm gonna go with this, but you can use anything you want. As for the color, we're gonna go for that hex code. Let's hit okay. And I'm gonna actually duplicate that layer. I'm gonna go to the first one. I'll rename to example and I'll change the color for clarity. Now I'm gonna take that text and I'll place it a bit higher. And now what you wanna do is head over to the second text and here we need to create words separately. So we need to make individual layers for each word. So in order to do so, I'm gonna double click and then I'll delete that part. And you can actually make sure to set the paragraph to the middle one, that's gonna be easier to control. Then I'm gonna recenter the anchor point and I'll move it over to the left. And now this is important, you wanna place it in the same position as the upper word, so that's where the upper text comes in handy. Now before we create another word, we're gonna head over to the expression over here, I'm gonna copy it, and I'll go to the position in our season. So I'm gonna alt click the stopwatch and I'll paste it. Now once you've done that, you can duplicate that text, move it over to the right, and change the text to five. Now I'm gonna make sure to have it aligned, like that. Then I'm gonna duplicate, move it over here, adjust a bit, you can hold shift in order to lock in the axis, and then duplicate one more time and type in now. All right, that seems to be pretty good. I'm gonna delete the example now, and then I'll trim the layers 
to the starting position of our frame. Actually, we can move it one frame forward. Now I'm gonna disable the bottom layers and I'll turn on the transparency grid and we're gonna just take care of our four texts over here. So I'm gonna select them all and I'll hit P on the keyboard and now we're ready to create the keyframe for position, actually keyframes. So we're gonna keyframe all the values, move it forward by three frames, so it should be here, and then we're gonna increase the Y value so it goes to the bottom in the beginning. So that way, you're gonna have something like that, and now we're gonna just have them one frame apart. So we're gonna have something like that, and now we're gonna bring back the other layers, and this is important, you can notice that we got the text beyond our frame, so what we're gonna do is head over to modes, I'll select all the four layers, and I'll drag the pick whip to our frame. And remember to drag the pick whip from track mat, not from parent and link over here. Then as you can notice, our frame disappeared, so we need to enable it again. I'm gonna turn off the transparency grid, and if you take a look, it stays within the frame. So here's our effect, and now we also need to turn on the motion blur for our text. So this is an extremely cool morphing effect together with the bouncy text. This is literally a killer combo. But now one thing we want to do with the thumbnail is add exposure effect to this. And we're going to place a keyframe for exposure, hit you, and then we're going to light it up just a bit. Right, it might happen a bit later, and this is going to look pretty cool. If you added a pointer over here, it would imitate clicking effect. I actually did it in one of the intros for one of my previous tutorials. So theoretically, you could leave it like that and here you have the final effect, but we're gonna spice it up a bit more. So I'm gonna right click, go to new, no object, and we're gonna rename to all. Now we're gonna select all the layers over here apart from the null, and we're gonna use parent and link and attach it to our all layer. So now with the help of this, we're gonna be able to control everything. And now something we wanna do here is place a keyframe for position, then hold shift click R in order to reveal rotation, we're gonna place another one, and then I'm gonna move over to the beginning, and we're gonna drag it lower, and then we're just gonna rotate it a bit. Now I'm gonna select all the keyframes over here, right click, go to keyframe assistant, and we're gonna press on easy ease. So once you've done that, make sure to go to the graph editor, and we're gonna push the pick towards the left. Just like that. So this is a pretty cool effect, you can always extend it. So whenever we got a little bit of momentum over here, it might look even better. So this was just an extra tip, you can always use it if you want. And actually I use that morphing technique for some of the assets in Motion Essence. So for example, if you go over to the messages and we grab mail onto the timeline, let me just solve it out, you're gonna have that cool effect where square is turning into a rectangle. So yeah, these are ready to use assets, you can always adjust the text over here. So this is pretty convenient and you got plenty of them over here. So I extended Black Friday deal only until the end of Cyber Monday, so this is literally the last chance. So grab the best offer of the year and hopefully that tutorial was helpful. You can drop a like, check out the video on the screen, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.